So the latest mob uprising or cancel culture situation has come up against Tucker Carlson. So Media Matters unearthed an old interview with him from 10 years ago where he makes some inappropriate jokes and he describes people of Iraqi descent and of and women as let's see what does it say semi-literate primitive monkeys that's the people of Iraqi descent and then he describes women as extremely primitive so so that's what he said and it was 10 years ago and you know the the mob is calling for his head or for his job or whatever however you want to look at it. it they're wanting him to be fired and being the typical centrist perspective it's let's this isn't a healthy way to live our lives in society this isn't the way that we want to this isn't what we want to be the norm we don't want people living in fear of what they have posted on the internet or from what they've said from 10 or so more years ago the argument being can people not change and initially i was on board and i was thinking yes okay that makes sense yeah sure we can apply that to tucker um you know look at him as a victim of the mob even though it is different with without even further reflection he i i knew he wouldn't lose his job i mean he works for fox news so that doesn't work over there it doesn't the the mob which is typically people on the left um, sometimes it can be a conservative group, but obviously with it being Tucker, tribal-wise, the people on the left and the, uh, particularly on the far left are calling for, for him to be fired. They're calling for advertisers to boycott his show. And I, I mean, nothing's going to happen because his base is loyal and they'll continue watching him. So I knew that he wouldn't lose his job. So that was a little different to me, but I did I did change my mind slightly because I saw a thread from, on Twitter, it's at Rogue Notary is his name and it's Matt Jameson. So I have not followed Matt for very long, but he's got a really interesting perspective. And at first it seemed like he was just being contrarian against centrists, but it's not. He himself is a centrist, I believe. Please correct me on that if I'm wrong, Matt. But he is just critiquing the outrage of the outrage. The centrists who get outraged at seeing all the people on the left mobbing and the people on the right, sometimes whatever it is that they're doing that seems ridiculous. I guess Trump alone is ridiculous at times. So he's just saying just because you see someone being ridiculous doesn't mean that we should then add on top our outrage. That's at least what I get from his tweets so far. So he writes, he it's a long thread, but I'm only gonna read two of them to get to give the gist. So people think things will be better once we defeat cancel culture. Once people stop apologizing and stop giving in. Some things certainly will be better, but we're also likely to overcompensate in a way that promotes horrible people. So in that way, I think he's meaning we can have people slip through the cracks who maybe should be held accountable from things from the past if they haven't changed and if they're harmful now. So the second one I think I'd like to read is, okay, this one really made me think actually. So it says, being an asshole in public is considered a, a legitimate justification for having a job, but an unfair justification for losing it. And people wonder how we got in this mess in the first place. So, okay. that That's a point. That's a fair point. The fact that, you know, we have someone like Trump who does not conduct himself in a professional manner. He is ridiculous on Twitter. And I think people in his own party, I'm pretty sure actually, are quite critical of the way he is, the way he conducts himself. He doesn't conduct himself in a presidential manner. So that's what came to mind. I don't know exactly where Matt was going 100% with that, but I think that's what he was m looking at. If people can get hired because of being outrageous and ridiculous, 
should they not also be then fired for being outrageous and ridiculous? And I haven't decided. I don't, I, I still need, I just read it today and I still am thinking it over. So I'm not sure, but it is a good question. And it does make me think from a different side and a different perspective. If you are a centrist, I would suggest following Matt because it's, he gives fair critiques. Um, so anyway, I'll put his details um, in the description section here. So that leading me back to Tucker Carlson, I don't know a lot about him, to be perfectly honest. I do think he does contribute to the outrage on the right. I mean, he is at Fox News. The things he says isn't quite trying to bring people back down to earth. It, it does divide. And he did not actually, I apologize, not that I think he should have, but he didn't apologize. He didn't actually say, I don't think those things anymore, or that was just a joke. That's not what I actually think. Ugh, this is such a hard one because, you know, sometimes when comedians make jokes like that, I don't like the idea of them even having to say, I don't really mean that. I'm a comedian. So and I, I don't think that they should have to even address jokes like that. But Tucker isn't a comedian. He's taken rather seriously by many people in this country so i do think that changes his position slightly and he could have clarified that it was a joke i suppose he could have clarified that and he did okay he did extend it was media matters who did all this i think he extended a an invitation for them to come on his show to discuss that's not nothing a lot of people don't think it's enough i don't know I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's not great. I don't, I mean, I'm a woman. I don't like being called primitive, but at the same time, it, it was 10 years ago. So I'm kind of in the middle of thinking about this. I, at first I just dismissed it as ridiculous, to be honest. And, but now this does make me think, should we be happy to have these figures be just so divisive and happy for them to be divisive and saying things that are not the same but sometimes on par with making us be outraged against the other side should we just be happy with that but then when something outrageous that they say comes out should we just dismiss that i think that the main thing is people are saying well tucker hasn't changed he's still the same guy he would probably say that today so I would, but I hate the idea of giving in and saying sorry and apologizing when people were spending hundreds of hours searching for something to just get you. So it's just, it's a hard space to be in, but this doesn't seem as cut and dry. And that's the thing about this is you have to look at it from a nuanced individual perspective. I think I, I would have said before today, all mob pylons are just wrong and should not happen and lead nowhere maybe i'd still agree with the first two points but leading this might lead somewhere to consider that you're a role model and that a lot of people uh, for tucker a lot of people who are on the right really value what he says and who could have racist leanings or misogynistic leanings and see that he didn't address what was said. He just said, oh, come speak to me and not correct anything about what he currently thinks. I, I wouldn't mind letting time to go by to see if someone does come to speak with him so he can talk about what he thinks now and compared to what he thinks then. Maybe it'll change. I don't know. But that's just, that's just my, my take on it. I would really like to know what you guys think about it. Please um, leave a comment. Also, if you want to just tweet me about it, um, my uh, handle is at the other underscore 95. Um, and I'll put that in the description as well. So thanks for having a listen. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you.